that. And Okay, I think I'm all ready. I've got pens, I've got paper, I've got um, the digital stuff. I'm a little chilly. Oh, I know, this is work. Now that we're dressed for the occasion. Okay. So Much better. A couple dropped frames, but nothing bad. And one last thing I need to check. No, I don't care about that. Okay, that's fine. I have posted it in a couple of places, and I guess I guess let's uh, let's do this do the show. Um, if you want, you can always pop over to the stream uh, on on Twitch, and you know just double check and make sure that things are set up for you. Okay. Yeah, I'm uh, looking at it now. All right. Good. Yeah, looks good. Okay. In that case, uh... Okay, so... Earthbound. Yeah, bring it to me here. So, uh... Right, crap, I forgot about that. I'm sorry. No problem. Should have said something, man. I, th I thought it was coming. <laughs> There. Ah, crap. All right, perfect. And let me pop over that. There we go. Take and... away. There. Oh, hell yeah. Good? Yeah, good. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Well, don't break things. Oh, fuck. I'm gonna need headphones for this. Hold on. <laughs> Forgot. I'm just broadcasting. So, okay. Where's my headphones jack? Where is my headphones jack? Uh, hold on, everybody. Okay. Okay. God, you got it? You good? I got it. I got it. I'm good. Okay. So, uh, I am going to power this off and power it back on so we get the full experience. Okay. And like we briefly discussed, you know, uh, I'm going to just sort of go through the game like I normally would. And if mm -hmm. there's things that you come across or that I come across that you want to, you know, explore further, uh, let me know. Also, I of will course. warn, there are a couple of times like this right here that can break streams uh, because of the compression stuff. So. All right. Okay. 
You know, I gotta say, like, what strange imagery right off the bat to, like, see that, like, the, the devastation and this, like, war against Gygus thing. At the, on the one hand, it's, like, it's leading you to believe that there's going to be some, like, epic battle against space aliens. And there is... But it doesn't exactly look like that. <laughs> it's much more surreal, you know? Yeah. Like, and there are going to be aliens in cities, but people are just going to be like, oh shit, I guess I'm going to be a worse kind of capitalist now, <laughs> or something weird, you know? It's, it's not like they rain destruction down. Yeah. Okay, anyway, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm ready. Okay, just sorry, gotta get one more screen up because something went weird. There we go, we should be good. Okay, so, you know, it does the normal, you know, if you let it sit on the menu long enough, it just goes through stuff, so. Uh, do you want any particular names? Does or... it show anything that's not in the game? No. Okay. No. Okay. So, I don't know uh, with playing. Yeah, what are the flavors? There's mint, which is what, sort of Can green. I see the... Okay. Strawberry, or... reddish, banana, yellow. Horrendous. Uh, peanut is brown. I like banana. Banana? <laughs> All right. Yeah, I like it. Shoot. Okay, hold on. I feel like. Uh, let me think here. We should come up with a theme. Well, okay. Do you uh... do you want to do you want to name them or do you want to just go with the default names? I don't know. I'm torn between my desire to be authentic to the experience and my desire to name them something goofy. <laughs> um, uh, whatever. Let's not overthink it. Just give them their own plain names, I guess. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I was thinking would be better anyways. So Yeah. Go with Ness, Paula, Jeff, and Pooh. Paula. Right. Got it. Jeff. Jeff. Oops. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Poo. King. St okay. Uh, we'll leave this one, I guess. Um, huh. So, this one... Steak. Pretty American. Yeah. I mean, that's the point, isn't it? I it, I have no idea. Is it the point? It is. is. The point that is the American? point. That is the point. Okay. This is supposed to be like you know, a spoof or a play on the uh, idealized TV drama-esque American city. Okay. Uh, I did not know that. I'll bear that. Okay, it's supposed to be a TV drama spoof. All right. uh, Con, uh, it actually does your not... Your favorite thing is rocking? That's the default. That's the default. Con, it does not affect things later on. All the food effects is what your mother offers you when you go to her to rest. So, uh, but yeah, uh, so Rockin is the default. This is one, all it changes is the name of your, your psychic attack. So we can change this to something else. Okay. Uh, uh, ponder. <laughs> ponder? Okay. Yeah, you know, like, we're not here to rock out. We're here to think. <laughs> Okay, it even fits. How about that? Okay. So yeah, you know this is this is the default set, other than the coolest thing. Uh, that's that's all the default stuff. Okay. All good. Yeah, looks pretty. It okay. Doesn't look unusual here. Let's get going then. I do like yep or nope though as your options. It's very nineties, isn't it? Yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's very 90s, but it's very unlike a game. 1990X. I wonder what the history of X as a time usage is. I like it to be like, it's the 1990s, but has nothing to do with reality. <laughs> That's like a chronotope thing. Okay, I was just checking. I can actually pause emulation if needed. Okay. But, so, I mean, you know, this is just the intro, right? Right. So, we're in Onet. 
a small town in Eagle Land, right? Which Eagle Land? Uh, yeah. Okay. It's both like England and like America. Mm. It doesn't. Is Ness supposed to refer to something? No, it's just a name. Well, okay. I mean, it refers to the main character of the first game. Mm. He was. He was. Who was Ness. Ness? Or no, sorry, that was actually Ninten. Um, Ninten, like Nintendo. Yeah, a little on the nose. What a huh? weird thing. So is his name Ness, like S- as N E S? As far as I know, it doesn't actually mean that. But you know, that's sort of the fan thing, right? That that that's sort of what it does actually mean. But uh, from what I understand, uh, Miyamoto and uh, uh, God. I lost his name. Anyways, right, the guy who came out, who made the game and the story, came out and were like, nah, it's not that, it's just a name. Um, But, you know, the fan thing was for ages that, yeah, it's just NES, as in, you know, a Super Nintendo, but you put the S at the end. In literary criticism, there's this whole idea of, like, it doesn't matter what the author is intended. Like, however you read it, like that's how you think about it like if they didn't mean it to be that way that doesn't mean it's not the case maybe something happened in the back of their minds that came out Mm -hmm. they didn't even think about it yeah i mean to name a character ninten seems a little like there's no way that couldn't have been obvious but yeah Uh, is this your sister yes what did she say hang on let me go back to her Ah, uh, it changed her text. Oh, okay, whatever. So, um, I, w- I do want to point out the uh, item drops you get in this game are not from chests, like in a traditional RPG of this period. They're presents. Right, well, I remember that from uh, Mother 3. Yeah. And it was also the case in uh, Mother 1 as well. I am not going to read the text. So Yeah, don't worry about it. You know, it's interesting, um, the siren sound, because there's not, like, police coming, are there? You'll see. Okay. Okay, so we change. Now, uh, normally, like, if you're just playing through the game, a lot of the time you'll maybe skip this room and not get that bat that I picked up, not talk to Tracy like that happens sometimes uh if you're doing your first run of this and especially if you're not very familiar with um RPGs can you call your dad I don't know if you can yet no so worth pointing out you're like 12 in this game or something like that and your mom just kind of is like okay well you know good luck is so strange. So, you were saying about the cops? Okay. There are cops. There are cops. Who are all clueless idiots. <laughs> what a, like, weird fucking thing. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So, you know, it's typical RPG of the time period. Sometimes you can talk to them multiple times to get different lines. So I'm not, unless you call out something you want me to, like, go talk to this person a bunch, I'm probably not going to, you know, try to get every single line out of everyone. Okay. Um, I'll, so, yeah, I'll point out who I'm interested in. Yeah. This is... Picky or no, Pokey's this brother? Is, this is just a dude. Just a person? Okay. Okay. Yeah. He's just a guy. You'll see oh, that yeah. you'll see that sprite reused a few times. Shut up, cop. Quit. Weird to think of like how much expertise must have gone into translating this when yeah that's 
Well, uh, that, and it's, that must have been a real endeavor. Man, that is that is a whole topic of its own, because translations of these games and localization of these games is a huge thing. Because that's something that was pointed out to me at one point is that it's it's not a translation; it's a localization. A translation is what happens when you get you know the bad English stuff. Where it's just uh-huh. like some things just don't make any damn sense because all they did was literally copy and paste and change the words to English. They didn't change any of the context. This game was localized, so things were changed for America. Some of it we can get into later because some of it is like getting rid of alcohol because of the way that things really, were. yeah. Because that was how games were seen at the time, right? You couldn't have alcohol in this game if you wanted it on a Nintendo console. Um, but so, um, a lot of things... A Nintendo console in the States, because it had alcohol in Japan. Yeah, because the Nintendo of America is different. Right, okay, right. And right, beyond right. that, our licensing and uh, the, the, the... Oh God, whatever it's called. The group that, that tracks all of that stuff and approves games... And gives them, you know, PG and, and R and mature, whatever the ratings are. Right, right. The ESRB? I think so. You know, you got to get past them too, and they were a lot stricter then as well. So anyways, you know, point is, there are differences between this and the original Mother 2 in Japan. Um, ESRB, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Khan. <laughs> um, so I'm going to grab this. So, let's see. Talk to this guy. Who is this guy? One sec. Because if you talk to him and then talk, read the billboard... Liar exaggerate. Mm-hmm. Huh. By the way, Khan, is the audio good? The audio balance? So this is this is pokey. Right. And we <laughs> Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, he comes back in three. I didn't finish it all the way, but mm-hmm. I know he's some kind of villain. Oops. Okay, so he doesn't say anything. That's so interesting. I'm fine here, but you're bugging the officers? What a weird... Meanwhile, yeah, I know. It's like, what an interesting little bit of characterization to have him, like, delivering this line, like, oh, you're doing the problem that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's what kind of guy this is. He's Mm -hmm. oblivious. He knows he sucks, but he's, like, projecting it outwards. Yeah. I would say that, I don't know if he knows or not. Like, I think it becomes... You know, I think that he figures it out later, but unconsciously, maybe. That's what that's what I mean. Like, he, what I, I, I'm, I'm still processing it, but that's what a, what a weird thing. The dialogue in this game has already struck. Like, you've got people like doing this like very um, um, melodrama thing where they're like, "Hello, I am a police officer." I do stupid things. <laughs> so. Uh, you know, and so one of the things that when we were talking about this before that I, that, you know, really stood out to me in comparison to other, some other games of the time period is, you know, you look at the art design of this game and things are it's entrancing it things are seem to me at least they seem like they're bigger they're closer in i think is the biggest thing it, it seems like a closer view yeah 
And things are more colorful by and large. You can say no, and it just nothing special happens. So you couldn't go up to the meteor, right? No. Okay. No, there's a cop. So it drags you all the way out to go look to look at it, and then sends you home. Yes. And now we're on to the next part. Mm -hmm. And that's knocking on the door. Yeah, let me turn it up a little bit. Actually, where is that audio on? I can hear it just fine. I've actually got it turned down a little bit. Okay. I mean, I don't know about the stream, but for me, it's... And now it's different knocking. <laughs> it's on the other side. Yeah. Because you went down the stairs. What a, like, weird... I don't know if it means... I mean, it must mean something. It's just but, It's just they're showing off the stereo sound. Well, not just that, <laughs> but, like, what a weird thing that this game is, like, inviting you just to listen to his annoying knock. <laughs> like, what an indulgent thing. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> right, stuff about Pokey in a different color. Just let me know if you need me to slow down or speed up on the text. Will do. You can uh, uh, continue at pace. I'll catch up or ask you for clarification. Uh, if you said no a second time, he would just repeat the line? If I remember right, yeah. All right. So, you remember how I said you might pass by the room uh -huh. with the bat in it? Right. Yeah. So, the first time I played this game, I had never played an RPG before. So, I didn't actually um, know how they worked. So, I went... I did not equip the bat. <laughs> Can you attack without it? Yeah. Uh. It just gives you more attack, right? <laughs> so, there were there. When did this come out? Ninety-five, I think. So there were probably games that had more intuitive menu yeah. and like equipment right this is yes. intentionally trying to make it a little so skill. so okay so i guess we can go into the menus a little bit so part of it there's two things going on here. one is that this is kind of a knockoff of dragon quest menus because they were popular okay. in japan like that was the thing to clone if you're going to clone something so part of it they were copying dragon quest Got it. Fine. Cool. Um, and this, you know, the distinction between talk to and check in the stat in the menu, uh, that is directly from Dragon Quest uh, and other similar games. Um, that said, the way that your inventory is so limited is intentional design for this game. You know, it is at the same time a callback to Dragon Quest, but Dragon Quest let you uh, have multiple of an item. Maybe not the first one, I don't know, I never played it, but 
this game specifically, they when they were setting out to make it, they specifically designed the inventory system such that you could not have, like, you know, X5 of bread roll. You know, each bread roll is an item an... in a slot. Why and, do you think they did that? And notice as well, your cracked bat, your equipped item, is still an item in your inventory. Each character has four equipable items. So... If you've got everyone decked out with their gear, you've got four item slots used for that. Then you've also got the ATM card that you can't get rid of. That takes up a slot. The whole game. They did it intentionally in order to make inventory management critical. Now, like I've said before, I think it was a mistake in terms of the longevity of the game. You know, the replayability in the future. But at the time, I guess it kind of made sense because it, like I've said before, it forces you to think about what items you carry and take with you. Hmm. You know, you can't take everything. You can't take 99 potions somewhere, 99 bread rolls. Um, so, you know, it makes you think. And I understand what they were getting at. It just it makes it hard to recommend this game to people. At this point in time. So, I'm gonna... Does it happen now? Yes. Okay, that's your dad. Yes. You know, it's interesting, the, like, in an RP, uh, in, like, a Final Fantasy game, and I mean, like, I'm no player of Final Fantasy games, but, like, your silent protagonist is not that big a deal, because you're, like, on this path of destiny, it doesn't really feel like there's much that's going to change anyway, and nobody's ever really talking to you regardless. But, like, already the intimate setting of this game makes it weird that, ne like, particularly weird that Ness doesn't talk, and really, like, that everybody is talking around him so um intentionally like already you see from pokey and your dad is such a i'm eager to see where they like take that i'm not i can't remember for sure if they like specifically address it but you know it it is a running theme to the game. and there will be more instances similar to that to, to what we've already seen You know, it's interesting because it's like, here's a thought. Um, you know, you, the player of the game, are going to encounter a protagonist, your your player character speaking the same way as any other character. Like it's 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 not going to seem like you. It's going to seem like someone else speaking. And so by making Ness silent, it's almost like he speaks more like you, the player, than any other way they could have done it. Mm -hmm. By taking away any voice, it like makes you feel more like, I don't know, I, I'm, I, I, I'm interested in the silent protagonist thing. Well, and I mean, you know, part of it, part of the silent protagonist is that that's just how a lot of games It's how it, they did it, you know? yeah. A lot of games do the silent protagonist. Specifically even today. because, you know, if you think about it, it's hard for someone to get um, really invested in a character who is speaking in their own way, in their own voice. Because then it's, you're just, you know, pointing that character at something rather than with a silent yeah. one. 
you know, it's... E even, even though now they say nothing, you feel more... Nothing is making you feel alienated from them. Like, they're silent. Yeah. Everybody thinks that's weird. So what? If they were speaking, then you would know for sure it's not you. <laughs> exactly. And because of the way that people and NPCs and everything talk around the character... Um, oh, level up. And life up A. Alpha, sorry. Yeah, that's a good point, Con. You know, uh, I don't know if you can see the text, the chat, um, on Twitch. Uh, yeah, I see it. I didn't think of that. I'm gonna write that down. Yeah, for posterity, uh, Con said, even today, that can be an issue. Look at Fallout 4 and the outcry when the characters started being voiced. So, uh, I do want to point out, you know, I've been through a few battles here. And the very first thing that happens when you level up, the very first time you level up, and we got a weird round of luck because I got three snakes in a row, and snakes are worth basically no experience. They're one. They're meant to be literally the first thing you fight, and just like, here's an easy fight to learn how it works. You're supposed to really fight the crows, mostly, and the dogs, which are tougher, but like, fight one or two crows, and you're probably going to level up. What happens is, your first level up, you get your first Psy ability, Life of Alpha, and that will fully max out your HP right now. So, you know, you go through a couple of battles, those crows will beat you up pretty hard. Um, huh. You get your level up, you get your life up, and then you can cast it and heal yourself. So it, it makes it clear that A, battles are, you know, they can, they can beat you down. But you can also, you know, deal with it. And look, I'm going to be up front. The battle system is, in general, nothing special. So like that, we're going to probably just kind of blast through it um, where possible. But, you know, it's... The backgrounds are cool. The music is great, I think. Uh, but the battle itself is often pretty boring. So, anyways. <laughs> Peace. What a weird thing. It's also weird that, like, everybody just leaves the meteor. <laughs> like, okay, I guess... Oh, they, they had a line about that. Uh, basically, the cops went to deal with the local gang. Oh, right, the sharks. Yeah. What happens if you say no? Okay. I don't hear it. Oh, now I do. I've always liked how big that beam is just for a bee. It is. It's a good. Ten years. <clears throat> Sent all the...
You know, um, don't spoil it for me. Uh, keep going. I'm fine. It's interesting that 10 years in the future thing, I'm interested to see how they deal with the future in this narrative because 10 years in the future is 2000 <laughs> in this game and everything about 2000 was different from the 90. I just, I'm interested, you know, cause the nineties was such a like utopian time where we thought we had figured out everything about the world. It's interesting to see like, just 10 years in the future, this game is like, there will be devastation by cosmic horror. <laughs> so, uh, I want to point out, on the way there, there were a bunch of enemies, right? No right? enemies on the way back. Huh. Except... A star man! A Starman who we who who is familiar. Mm -hmm. So this is a gimme fight, but I do want to point out something. I said most fights are going to be kind of whatever. This one is a bit of an exception. Just pay attention to some of the text when the you know, tagalongs attack or do their things. You notice what I mean? Picky versus pokey there? You know, and it's one of those things where that's probably partially meant to just be played off as a joke, a little funny haha -ha thing, but, you know, it is actually a characterization between Picky versus Pokey that Picky is sitting here trying to help, and Pokey is doing everything not to. Have you ever seen the, um, Ralph Bakshi movie, um, Wizards? No. The Starman look cartoony and silly but also very fascist with their like military um little insignias and their like helmet it's so, interesting they, got, they look sinister you've got twitch up right yeah yeah right so that's the box art and for a long time, I and a lot of people used to think that the Ness in the there thing was actually inside driving him, but it's uh, actually a reflection. Oh, uh, I see. I see. Huh. Anyways. Weird. But yeah, you know, I yeah, definitely. I, I don't know. It's not something that I'm really equipped to comment on, but. I can see it. I can see what you were saying. They're an inter they're it's an interesting image, is is for sure. Ten years in the future. Okay. I'm eager to see about this. Time in this game. The Gygus influence on human mind things is interesting. Wow, their mom looks horrifying.
It's that smile that takes up like half her face. Ten years in the future. Um, I need to step away for a couple of minutes. Um, we'll be right back, folks. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess I can idly theorize while I'm here. Let's see what we've got so far. Okay, so I'm definitely interested in this, like, ten years in the future thing. Because I know that this game is going to take place in the present, which is 1990X, which is already such a weird framing. It's not the 1990s. It's an alternate 1990s were marked as being in narrative time from the get-go and so it's strange that we're presented with this like well it's the present but not the present and there's a problem in the future and it's not the distant future it's the very near future but at the same time like I guess I don't know. My intuition is to say that in the 90s, past 2000 seemed like such a radical impossibility. It was impossible to predict. But 2030 doesn't feel the same way to me. And that could be just total personal, personal gnosis here. But I wonder if this idea, because I'm thinking of um, Fukuyama's The End of History. And so he writes, we're in the 90s. There will be no more progression. All we're going to do now is like figure out how to make the systems we've got now run most efficiently. And... If this game was written with any awareness of that, that it's making this comment like, like the 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 the, the, the possibility for the future or the future that we're on track for is this one corrupted by um, cosmic evil. A cosmic evil so potent that it steps back in time and corrupts the present moment. Well, that's weird too, because it seems to implicate the present moment in the power of the great evil. 
the cosmic evil. Like, how can Gygus affect people's minds in the past? Um, uh, 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 propagate evil in the past? If there's not already the potential for Gygus in the past? And then thinking of this idea of like strange and alternate time, you know, your first actions with people outside of your home are marked by some kind of strangeness. Like the police officers are all uh, uh, openly joking about like how frivolous or miserable they are your uh, neighbors are all curious buffoons in their own ways the game is definitely trying to make its thesis clear from the get go I think it's got an interesting brand of surreality. Like, um, in role JRPGs that I've played from this time period, which, again, by no means are extensive, the surreality, the humor, is an aspect of it, but rarely, like, the central component. The, the story always comes back to like um well there's a giant monster or an evil god or something like that and we've just got to like muster up our power and go deal with it but here all of the like odd dialogue and strange people seem to be telling you something about Gygas. like are these cops being buffoons because Gygus is influencing their mind? Are the sharks rampaging around the city because Gygus is influencing their mind? That's what it seems to me to be positing. And we're only like 20 minutes in. Oh, I missed part of that, but sounds about right. I'm, I'm just marveling I'm extrapolating from 1990X. I just think that's such an interesting thing. <laughs> I like this guy. <laughs> I like I like how it's not if you left soon or if you left now. It's if you left sometime soon. <laughs> so this is a line that I... You know, you you kind of see it as a throwaway initially, but as we go through the game, that I think makes more uh, impact. Oh man, she is so disgusting looking. That is so weird. What a surreal way to, like, have you encounter the death of your mentor. This is like Obi-Wan Kenobi being killed. <laughs> but ridiculous. <laughs>
He was holding a rock? Mm-hmm. Somehow. Awesome. All it does is loop it. And then he's just gone. Can we see the rest of her house? Of their house? Interesting. Yeah, so none of these houses ever, like, actually... You know, there's never enough rooms. Well, I'm, that's kind of an interesting... I mean, it's kind of like a House of Leaves thing, but it's also like... It only shows you what you're going to experience. Like, Ness wouldn't go into their parents' room, so you can't. And then it's daytime. <laughs> so this guy just uh, falls out of the sky and takes pictures of you? Yep. Kind of a pedophile thing. Huh? A little bit. <laughs> but also very interesting. Like, what a way to be... Like, I presume you don't encounter him outside of that. Nope. Then, like, what a strange thing to be like, here's a reminder that you're, like, inside of a frame. This is a game that you're watching. Here, we're gonna, like, double it for you by having this guy come in and, like, take pictures. Do you ever get to see the pictures? Yes. Okay, don't... Uh, uh, I'll see it when it happens. I do want to point out one thing. And I don't remember if this is actually mentioned in the game or itself or not. Ness can talk to animals. I gathered from his dog. So this is just the, every time you call your dad, this is the save blurb. Doesn't really change. Got it. Did he say, I don't think it's good to work too hard? Mm -hmm. Or I think he doesn't think it's good. He doesn't. But that's what he's doing. Yes. Interesting. It's supposed to be a comment, from what I understand, it's supposed to be a commentary on the Japanese salaryman lifestyle. Well, figure out what it means. A library. Do you fight books? No. <laughs> <laughs> Kids can only borrow quest items. <laughs> exactly. So, this library is effectively the tutorial for the game. I can go through it if you want. Is there anything interesting? Eh. I mean, I guess... I guess let's see what the our conveniences wait 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 I'm sorry I have to write that down that's amazing our convenience society mm -hmm. uh convenient okay go on society demands demands it yeah 
<laughs> just it demands it. Isn't that convenient? We're forced into the system. <laughs> Wait, did she say it is convenient? But that's not what the other guy said, right? Um... Our society is convenient. So, two different books. Very kind of a 1984 vibe there, like... Our society is double plus convenient, citizens. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> Busy, okay. I mean, it's a library, you know? You know, I'm also going to be interested to see, like, how money comes up in this game. Okay, they had these in, um, three. Alright, that sounds good. That's everything, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, I want to see what's up with that guy. Can you go in the ladies' bathroom? No. Okay. okay, weird. But yeah, like I said, it's a tutorial. Yeah, got it. Okay. And and very uh, obviously Giant Step is the next big uh, dungeon or something. Yeah. It's a hideout around here? Oh, there it is. Oh, that's nice. Mr. Baseball. Dreams. Uh, so these moles are like a continuation of the tutorial. I'm not your enemy. <laughs> yeah, what's he has to say? Okay, yeah. Yeah, you know, they they do break the fourth wall a fair bit in this. So obviously, you know, you've been told to come to the giant step. Hey. But it's locked. A punk named Frank. The crow has a bow tie? Yep. A bow tie and sharp sunglasses. Yep. That's weird. Hey man, crows are fancy. Look, I agree that crows are fancy, but um I I, I still think that uh, a bow tie and um cool sun chase. Now what is that? Dog. Oh. So 
So one thing I do want to point out is that I don't gain money at the end of these fights. I just gain experience. Right. Occasionally, do you ever get items? Occasionally an item, yeah. The crows can steal from you? Yes. And they take items out of your inventory? Yep. Can they take stuff you have equipped? No. They can only take, like, consumables. Uh, that's why I used a bread roll before I fought a crow earlier. Okay. There you go. Items. Yeah. Do enemies later on keep doing this thing where they'll, like, waste a turn characterizing themselves? No. Okay, that goes away eventually. Yeah, you know, this is just sort of introducing you to the game. Wildflower of Eagle Land. I really, I really like this perspective. It's, um, you're right. Like this game does space in a very unique way. Like it feels like you're supposed to, um, get to know this town a lot more than just like X town in a Final Fantasy game. Can you buy this? Yep. I mean, not right now, but... <laughs> but if you collect that much money, you can buy it. Yep. Is it hard to get that much money? Right now, yeah. Later? No. Right. Okay. No, no, no. Later on, it's super easy. Okay. Those are sharks? Yep. Level 3, 45. Okay. I could maybe swing that fight, but... So, okay, okay, okay. So, you know, if you're following the story, um, you know, more or less following what it's telling you to do, you go to the shack up the giant step, you get told, hey, city hall, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, this is City Hall, so you go in here. Right. Town Hall, whatever. Fair complaint. I would be pissed. Okay, will she stop you? Okay, so... It's you know. strange how everyone looks like a Playmobil toy.
Oh, that is strange. Fresh breeze movement, she called it? Mm hmm Wait, what did he want to keep between you and him? Okay. Uh, so you can't deal with the mayor right now. Nope, you can't even get in to talk to him. But, if you noticed, they did talk about the sharks a whole fucking bunch. They did, very leading. So, then you would obviously wander around the town, which I already started doing. Those are enemies. I'm not going to go fight them just yet. Sounds good. Because we're going to go to the drugstore. Is there any reason to keep your money in the ATM? If you die, you lose half of it. What? Does a game designer possess anything else? I'm pretty sure. Okay. Well, mostly they possess the dogs that stand next to the ATMs, but... I think there are a couple of others. It's gonna happen again. I believe so, yeah. Okay. Do you want to, like, equip it here? So yeah, the way the money works is that every time you fight, you don't get money from the fight. You get money when you go check your ATM, because your father deposits money every time you get experience points, basically. Oh, bugs him. Giant ant. I get it now. Thank you, John. I can't believe I didn't see it. Um, so one of the things here... Wait, 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 stop here. It, okay, it said Ness digs into the can, right? Yeah. And then it said, well, let's see here, right? Uh-huh. So there's like a narrator to this game? I guess. <laughs> it's fucking weird. Okay, please go on. Oops. It was just a plain old what? There's just plain old garbage here. So, obviously, you know, it's an RPG, you've got your healing items, you've got your status items, you got all of that stuff, and... Magic Butterfly. I don't need it, but that's the thing. You know, so, if you get... It's not a medieval 
RPGs, so, you know, you're not going to get um, the same status effects. You know, instead of like a poison, you would get, you catch a cold. And you take a cold remedy for that. You know, you pop some NyQuil. Dayquil, whatever. Her. Um, you know, so that's sort of a difference. And then obviously your healing items is going to be food. Right. Yes, man? Mm -hmm. This outfit is absurd. Baby. Mm -hmm. um, one of the interesting things here is that the status effects that you get... Okay, you've played Final Fantasy games. You've played RPGs before. Yep. If you get a status effect and you're fighting a boss, are you ever going to use that status effect on a boss? Never works. You can't put a boss to sleep. You can in this game. Right? Not all of them. You know, there are exceptions, and then some of them, especially late in the game, it stops working as well. But early bosses, like, we'll get to one relatively soon. Relatively soon, right? That I can paralyze him. And he's a melee boss. Uh, mm, I'm trying to think of how to write that as a no. Can you give bosses a cold? No. Uh, well... I don't... Maybe with prey? I don't think there's any stat any status affecting moves that I get that will give someone a cold. So, you know, um, I um, I've thought of that before. How it's frustrating to get those kinds of moves that um, do status effects because you can never use them against tough enemies, and so it makes those characters seem less useful. But it also seems like such a standard within these kind of games that you can't do status effects to bosses. I wonder why... I wonder why this game would differ from that. What are they trying to say about their bosses? About their game that's different? Um, I mean... You know, part of it truly was that they were trying to do something a little different, while still being within the genre. Uh -huh. And yeah, Kana is right. It's it's often hard to find something more efficient in an RPG than just doing damage. Um, and you know, it's especially true because things like you know, Psy Hypnosis, Hypnosis Alpha. I think that's like three psychic points, and especially at this point in the game, that's a lot. You know, right. that's that's a rare resource. You can't easily recover it. Um, six. I'm sorry, it costs six. One use oh, of... you can only use it once. So one use and of life up anything else. is five. So what's better? You know, do I restore my health points and be able to deal more damage? Or do I take a chance at sleeping an enemy? You know, so... I don't think I ever normally use hypnosis, but it's always stood out to me that one example because, I don't know, it's, you know, it's one of those things where it is one of the differences. Um, is it true every single time? No, no, it's not. Um, but especially early in the game, you can get a lot of value out of those status effects. Sorry, I gotta... 
I'm gonna go heal real quick. You know, it's interesting. Two things occurred to me about this game structurally. One thing, I want to meditate more on that status effects thing. But it's interesting to have this game doing this like, well, it's just plain old garbage. Or do you want to do this? Options. Yep. Nope. To like put it in um, uh, such a vulgar tongue. Because it's like the idea of menu language, the problem with translation and localization is that you need your players to understand. Like that language needs to be clear to like make the game operable. This game is relying so heavily on you already understanding like how an RPG would be structured, that it's like joking with it. What the fuck? <laughs> I can't afford it and I don't need it, but he actually tells you, like, if you actually get lost in this game, you go find one of these hint guys and they actually tell you what to do. You know, it actually genuinely points you in the right direction. And it's not very vague about it a lot of the time. It's often like, uh, you know, in this case it might be like, Hey, you know, there's that gang of sharks wandering around. Maybe you should go do something about that. Your connection with the um, hint vendor struck me because it's like in a game like this at this time you're so used to like going to a shopkeep hitting a and then it's just like buy magic you know you just like get the menu but here's this guy essentially giving you no menu at all he's just like having a conversation with you and you're supposed to figure out that he sells you something. And I mean, I know it's obvious, but that's still so unusual that he's like, oh, you must be pretty caught. It's not just like, uh, select no, dialogue ends. You're still speaking with him after you refuse his service. Mm -hmm. He's not just a vendor. He's a person that you interact with. That's so weird. <laughs> Games today aren't like that. <laughs> like, how many times... You know, it's not until, like, Skyrim that you get, like, people that you interact with. And even in Skyrim, at a certain level, the vendors are all like, good day, commoner. And then you go down to the buy option, and then you're done. You don't speak with them anymore. Mm -hmm. You did! I did. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, things like, hey, he fell down, that that stuff does start to go away. But, you know, this, this zone, yeah, this zone, you know, this sharks area, it's, it's a tutorial still, you know? It's teaching you how to play the game, and it's giving you opportunities to learn. It, it, it's also, um, I mean, it's kind of, maybe I'll, I'll see how I feel about it later, but right now it's kind of interesting to think of like, you're only at the beginning of the adventure. Um, the enemies aren't that capable either. <laughs> to like characterize them as being beginner enemies, it has them like, actually fucking up in yeah. battle <laughs> that's weird <laughs> yeah they don't they don't necessarily know any better than you
You know, okay. Hold on, let me write down a thought before I vocalize it. Okay, uh, uh, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. So, you know how I said that the first time I played, I didn't actually know about equipping items? Right. This enemy. Oh. <laughs> Sigh, rocket dude. So, yeah. That was actually how I figured out about equipping in this game. You know, I was just thinking, um, uh, games in the past, in this genre, um, and today are no stranger to the, like, scripted fight to, like, um, make a point or drive some cinematic thing home or to show, to, like, show you a victory that's supposed to be easy or to show you a battle that's impossible, whatever. You can't beat it, or you have to do these certain moves. It's interesting that they are making the fights winnable, not by, like, scripting them, but inter it's just an interesting kind of take on how they're putting their thumb on the narrative, or on the, uh, on the gameplay experience, to soften it up but without making it seem like it's totally out of your control. <laughs> Shit. Okay. So this is a part of the game where there is some unfortunate grinding that basically has to be done. Uh, I am now at the level that I need to be at for Frank, uh, which is obviously back there. But I need to go heal. Uh, and yeah, basically you you kind of need to be level five. You speedrunners do it faster, but I'm not a speedrunner. Um, I've done it lower, but it's hella risky. So I normally don't. Good. What do you heal? Go back home? Yeah. Damn, you got some cash. We've only heard a little bit of it, but I also like how jazzy the battle music is. Yeah, there's a lot of jazz and blues influence the music. Well, it's interesting because, like, you think of, um, like, I bet fans of this genre eventually get like oh my favorite battle music from like final fantasy is from this one or something like that you know like that's a a part of the game that you that you come to enjoy or not enjoy from playing them you think about the battle music mm -hmm. and in like the final fantasy games it's normally something like rocking and like high intensity but here it's like off key and jazzy and strange and moody. It just it like really underscores the whole thrust of this game quite well. I know I'm not observing anything unusual here. I'm only appreciating it in this my first real exposure to it. The high ceilings are great. It like emphasizes the shortness of your character. You as a child look up and see any ceiling as high.
The crows are too sinister. They're the ones I uh, that displease me the most. Well, they are spiteful. Spiteful crows. Mm, I don't like that. Crows are capable of spite. That's not even too unusual. I really like what's going on in the back, the backyard there. Yeah, I like this guy. A robot. That's it. Okay. Yep. Wow. <laughs> He's a rockabilly? Oh, shit. Now, this is rockin'. Psy rockin'. Okay. What the fuck? One hit? I mean, like, you didn't get to eat your hamburger. Yeah, because he went first. Yeah. So what happens when you die? You lose half your money and you come back at the hospital. That's it? Well, sorry, last place you saved. Right. That's not uh, too bad. If you I have... It depends on how much money. Yeah, and if you have people with you, they come back as ghosts. So, early in the game, it's easy, right? It's no big deal. Yeah, that was really, that was genuinely really unlucky. Uh, he brandished his knife twice, which is kind of odd, and he got a smash hit on one, or sorry, three times, and he got a smash hit on one of the, it was, that was, that was... Just some bad rolls? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was genuinely just bad. Stole my hamburger. <laughs> Bird stole your hamburger. <laughs> what a little chubby boy you are! <laughs> your greasy fingers could hold on to it. To Bird stole your lunch. <laughs> I don't know what JJBA. Oh, hold on. JoJo. JoJo's Bizarre Jojo Adventure. Bizarre. Uh, okay. Is that a show? Yeah. Uh, let me write that reference down. Part four. Okay. Oh god, this guy is absurd. What's his name? Frank? Frank. So yeah, what I'm looking for is for him to come out swinging. Because that's a lower damage attack. Uh, saying something nasty is okay too. But to get three... Brandishes? That was, that was rough. Frankie Stein got a robot. Wow, and the music has bongos. Shit, okay, so he's on that cycle, so okay. 
We will. So wait, what did? What do you mean he's on that cycle? He generates a burst of steam every other attack. I didn't expect him to do it the first turn. I thought he did it the second turn. Ah. Basically, it gives you a chance to recover from this attack. Interesting intersection here between like modernity and evilness. They like hang out in a um, arcade. They have a robot. Machines are corrupting the youth. So, an interesting thing about him now... <clears throat> He's an ally? Yep. So, interesting. The uh, first... Yeah, go on. Unfortunately, I need to cut it short this time, um, but we can... Uh, oh, I got, that's I gotta fine. take care of something. That's fine. So... Well, plenty to think on. I'm eager to see the rest. Yeah, so, um, you know, we'll, we'll do this again soon. Um, I just... I've gotta go do something, so... Sure. Okay, stay tuned, everybody. We'll post about it. All right. Bye. See you.